entering Corneria's orbit. mode. Let's take the offensive. Do a barrel roll! I live right by the Fushimi Inari Shrine. I've had a relation with this shrine since I was a child. Because of that, I felt that I was always protected, as if it's my guardian angel. When I was a child, there was a TV show about fighter planes called Thunderbirds. That inspired me to make a game that had cinematic elements, with each character having a distinct personality and their own drama. That would be reflected in the dialogue and appear in scenes like where a cool character and enemies would appear. I'm here for a job, of course, and looks like I get to have a little fun. When it came to talking about details regarding how to make the main characters look and feel, we talked about all sorts of types of people. But ever since I was in school, I drew comics with caricaturized humanoid animals and decided that the characters in this game should be based off animals. I then talked about it with Emma Morrison, the designer, and we thought about the fox image. Then I thought, let's try making a fox the main character. We're entering Corneria City now. When there's an arch, you want to go under it, right? That's the kind of game I wanted to make. Thinking about the shrine, this place is known for the row of arches. So we went with this idea to create a game where you would fly through different arches. Star Fox is a game where you use a control stick, like the one you'd find on a plane. When you fly a real plane, you need to pull back on the control stick to fly up, right? Similarly, you can use the gyro on the gamepad to look all around and feel really immersed in the game. We'd like people to play as if they are flying a real plane. It's really exciting. For Wii U, with its two screens, we experimented with gameplay with ideas before this iteration of Star Fox. There were two screens that each serves a specific purpose. For example, we've tested using one screen for a more cinematic view and the other for gameplay. The Wii U gamepad has a gyro, and it's a big reason we decided to make this game. It's a cockpit view, so it feels like you're in the cockpit like this. You can aim by moving the gamepad around. In the other Star Fox games, you play by controlling your plane in third person on one screen. This time, the game world is shown on the TV and you can focus in to aim on the gamepad. By using two screens, you can see yourself flying in third person on the TV while shooting down at the enemies below you from the cockpit view on the gamepad. You can be really immersed in the experience, so that's something I hope people can check out. On the Nintendo 64 system, you had to use a lot of buttons. But now, with the Wii U gamepad, you can use two sticks to do things like speed up and flip around. There's only one button to fire all the different weapons. So there are four buttons left, and with that, we thought, why not use these buttons to make the R-Wing transform? and let's use one button to do flips and the other for a U-turn. 
the R-Wing transforming into a walker, that was in Star Fox 2. But since that game didn't make it out, I'm glad we were able to have it appear. The R-Wing transformation mechanic actually looks like it makes a lot of sense. There's the Landmaster. And also the Gyro Wing, which adds a lot of breadth to gameplay. With it, you can perform a lot of tasks as Fox. You can also play different stages with other vehicles, too. So I hope you'll have fun trying out courses with different vehicles even after you clear the game. We've rebuilt the game using ideas from the past, but it's not a part four or part five. It's not a remake either, so we named it Star Fox Zero this time. The subtitle Zero was taken from how the kanji character looks in calligraphy. Star Fox is based off of the Japanese culture that inspired me, so I wanted people around the world to see this cool kanji character in the logo. When I saw it, it reminded me of a foxtail. We wrote the character with a brush and added the logo. It looks cool.